morning, everybody, and welcome to Erner Barry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Today is Tuesday, June the 13th. I hope your day is going well so far. I was just saying in some banter before the video came on how good it is to be back uh, hosting the video, and I want to thank uh, my colleagues for doing such a great job in my absence over the last couple of weeks. So we're going to get right into it today, and starting off today is Karen Rispoli, and Karen is going to give us an update on the ever changing egg market. Good morning, Karen. Good to see you. Hey, good morning, everyone. Yes, good to see you as well. Um, it's funny that you should say that the ever changing egg market. It does feel like anytime I've been on here to talk about eggs in recent history, it's to tell you how prices are often running in one direction or another. Um, but this week, I'm actually here to tell you that the market is quite stable, which is not something that we've seen much of um, in recent months or even years. Um, in fact, if you were to pull up a contiguous chart of Midwest large, you'd actually have to go all the way back to summer of 2021 to find a similar period of time with no change in the market, um, which is coming up on three weeks now. Um, I'm not going to get into charts and all that this week. This is going to be more conversational. Um, but that's not to say that the market, you know, has been rock solid all along. There have certainly been some, you know, times in the past few weeks where it felt like, you know, prices could break lower or even higher. Um, but it continues to find its footing, which suggests, of course, that it's finally found um, a decent equilibrium here between supply and demand. Um, on the supply side, that, of course, has a lot to do with the fact that we've not had any bird flu outbreaks um, among layers since December. And on the demand side, um, retail business has been quite good um, thanks to feature activity and lower everyday price points. I know in my own local big box store, you can find single dozen large right now for a dollar. And if you're willing to commit to uh, larger pack types like twin 18s or a five dozen box, you're actually looking at less than a dollar per dozen, um, which is very competitive overall, but especially relative to where we were earlier in the year and to competing proteins. Um, as we all know, food inflation is still very much an issue. So those lower prices appear to be helping to maintain consumer interest at a time of year when normally it starts to taper off with the warmer weather and people uh, being on the go a bit more. Now, there's been another stabilizing force in the marketplace, um, but this one perhaps falls into the not so great category. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've not had any bird flu outbreaks since December, but there is a new disease on the scene, um, and that is the coriza virus, which is basically an acute respiratory infection um, that causes a drop in egg production. Um, right now, it's mainly concentrated to the Midwest, Ohio specifically, but it's uh, an airborne uh, disease that's said to be highly contagious, so certainly something to keep in eye on. Um, now, unlike the bird flu, this is not a disease that needs to be reported to state or federal agencies. So there's really no way to pinpoint with any measure of accuracy what the impact has been on production. Um, any information that I can offer you here is really anecdotal in nature, gathered from talking to you know experts in the industry and to producers themselves that are currently infected. Um, so all that being said, it's estimated um, that more than 10 million birds are currently infected. That doesn't mean, however, that 10 million birds have died. Um, while there is some naturally occurring mortality that comes along with coryza, unlike the bird flu, it does not require that barns be depopulated. Um, basically, the birds feel pretty lousy, you know, coughing, sneezing, watery eyes, puffy face, you know, just like humans when they're sick, um, when they feel like that, they don't really have much interest in eating or drinking. Um, and without, you know, all that proper nutrition, there's naturally a, a drop in production. Um, again, this is a really difficult thing to measure because not all birds respond in the same way. Um, that drop could be anywhere from 10% to as much as 40%, depending on the age of the flock, among other things. Um, so there's really no way to quantify what the impact has been, but we know for sure, um, just from what we've seen take place in the market, that it certainly tightened up the supply side to some extent. So um, the market had been feeling a little bit top heavy, um, particularly cage-free production, but it's said that uh, cage-free layers have been hit especially hard. So that kind of helped stabilized the cage-free market, which meant that there was not eggs being downpacked from cage-free into conventional, which then helped stabilize that market. So um, right now it's feeling, you know, again, pretty steady. Um, obviously anything could happen from here as we've witnessed in the past few years. Um, but here we are, you know, almost three weeks deep with no change in the market. Karen, does, does steady or equilibrium, equilibrium translate into a seasonal scenario? I mean, if you took the last 10 years, I mean, is that sort of traditional for the middle of June? 
There is usually, um, I would say the summers are typically quiet, but the last few years, of course, have been very unusual given the bird flu and, you know, the pandemic and so forth. But if you're looking on like a more expansive basis, like you said, 10 years, I would say that typically prices are weaker during the summertime. So I think that uh, a lot of buyers in the market um, have been expecting the market to come down and have been surprised that it's been holding on here. Um, you know, this is usually a window of opportunity where the breakers can load up. Up, find cheap eggs around and they're just not finding it at this time. So yeah, it has been a little bit um, surprisingly stable, I would say, for, for a lot of folks. Well, I know, and we discussed this earlier, the consumer that I am taking note of the feature activity. I don't even look at the everyday price, uh, <laughs> but when I was shopping at my local grocery store, uh, $2.99 for you know, a well-branded uh, product, and I scooped them right up because how can you go wrong for that with that? So thank you very much, Karen. And and thinking and speaking of like steady and equilibrium and so forth and so on, Ryan and I had a little discussion before the video shoot. And, and if I'm not mistaken, that's sort of the scene uh, in uh, in the pork market right now, which in itself is newsworthy. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Russ. Yeah, you're absolutely correct there. Uh, earlier on in the year, there was so much weakness within pork pricing. There were significant amounts of pork on the market, both fresh and frozen product. But we are beginning to see seasonal interest shift as we typically do in pork as we move into summertime. Here, this chart we're looking at is the earner berry pork carcass cutout. And what you're going to see in all these charts here is comparisons to 2022 and 2021. Now, as you can see, um, we dip down in the year where typically last year and the year before we were seeing increases and we are now just starting to see that again supplies have really tightened up on the market and this is definitely a supply driven market right now rather than demand and as we can see here weekly slaughter levels have really begun to drop off here this is a normal seasonal occurrence year over year that we've become, become accustomed to seeing in the pork industry but it's notable because fresh supplies have really started to tighten up from this in addition to hog weights coming down as well. So total production has really been on the decline here, especially over the last few weeks here. You have the down day from Memorial Day, and then even looking forward with 4th of July falling on a Tuesday this year, it looks like there's going to be a good bit of uh, plant downtime uh, this year just on the with the weekend and, and how everything's shaped up to be. So tight, fresh pork supplies have definitely been the story, and it's definitely been a driver in helping the cutout improve here over the last about a month. Um, we'll keep this pretty quick. I'm just going to highlight a few quick items this year that are really seeing some strong interest now. Uh, first is the quarter inch pork butt. This is your, uh, generic, I should say, type of pork butt item that comes right off the hog. Um, it's performing very well. It's performing right near 2022 levels. Within a few weeks, it's looking like it's trending near the 2021 levels as well over here. Um, this is definitely a retail-driven market right now. Pork butts are seeing active demand um, all over the country, mainly down south. A good bit of it is down south, but it's definitely all over the country um, being used as a loss leader, and uh, and consumers are reacting really well to, to this item right here. There is some export demand to Mexico and some to South Korea as well that is helping support this, but this is definitely one item that is helping support the cutout here. Last but not least, pork trim items, uh, both lean and fat items here. We'll take away 2020, which is a was a crazy year, of course. Um, we're starting to see a bit of a bump. We are trending below the last two years here, but with the tight uh, slaughter and declining hog weight, we are definitely seeing less trim come off the animals here and, and, and off the further process cuts, and we're starting to see an increase in pricing here. Now, I will say it's important to note there is definitely still a good bit of frozen pork out there in the country right now, but it's not weighing on values as heavily as we saw earlier on. In and thank you, Ryan. We always appreciate your insight on the pork market. I know, again, as a consumer, the pork, uh, the baby back ribs are still providing a value for me. I have a, a rack in the fridge right now. Uh, but again, Ryan, always informative, and, and thanks for your time today. And that's going to take us over to Dylan Hughes this morning. Dylan, I hope you're doing well. I couldn't help uh, but listen to Ryan's opening remarks, and he said something like, this is definitely a supply-driven market more than demand. And, and in a sense, we could say that about the chicken market right now, but its undertone would be actually a little bit different. It's supply-driven, and it's pressuring that market, uh, really, rather than any kind of demand scenario. Good morning, Dylan. 
Morning, Russ. Good morning, everybody. Uh, that is entirely correct. Uh, we are seeing um, some record high production figures over in the world of chicken. Uh, and that's a big reason why we are seeing, you know, items such as jumbo boneless breast meat correct lower in value. Of course, there are a number of factors at play, but this one certainly is raising the attention uh, of a lot of market participants right now. Uh, over the past week, we've seen jumbo boneless breast values dip by about 8.2%, which represents about a 12 cent per pound drop in value. Um, you know, of course, going back to the production, Production figures uh, look no further than headcount, which is up about 1%. That sounds like a modest advance year over year. Uh, however, that does represent about 41 million additional chickens crossing the line. This is uh, coming in at record levels so far in 2023. At the same time, you know, we not only are we seeing additional headcount, but we are also are seeing some additional uh, heavy chickens crossing the line, line as well. If we take a look at the cumulative figures here, uh, average live weights between the start of January and uh, the tail end of May uh, averaged about 6.35 pounds, uh, which is coming in right around the previous all-time high uh, back in 2021. So more birds, heavier birds. Uh, so that is certainly creating a lot more production out there on the spot market. Uh, now, another factor at play, um, speaking to the demand side, has been the Canadian wildfire up north, which has you know negatively impacted the air quality across a large swath of U.S. states, in turn limiting consumer spending, consumer foot traffic, especially in food service, QSR, retail buying channels. Uh, so that's certainly another factor at play here, uh, which is potentially dragging values of jumbo boneless breast specific specifically a little bit further down. Uh, but again, you know, it's hard to look past the fact that from a seasonal perspective, uh, it's really hard to be surprised that we are seeing a, a correction in jumbo boneless values now of all times. Uh, if we take a look at the historic charts here, uh, right around the middle of, of May, you can see that that's when the market typically peaks in value and then it corrects lower into June. Um, between mid-May and June, for instance, over the past five years, we've seen about a 15% drop in spot quotations. Uh, so really, this this is not much of a surprise. It has occurred a little bit later on than typical here um, in uh, 2023, but uh, that doesn't change the fact that we are seeing a seasonal pattern play out right now. Um, so moving forward, as we kind of inch closer towards the summer months, we'll certainly be consulting with the supply side of the equation keeping a close eye on consumer spending, especially in food service, retail, QSR buying channels, uh, along with, you know, just watching the historic charts, just because the seasonal chart says that values have historically dropped, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, values could certainly see an uptick in value uh, moving a little bit later on in the year. 2021 would be a fine example of this, where we saw a little bit of an uptick in value towards the end of the summer months. So certainly be keeping our attention on boneless breasts moving forward. Yeah, I, I would add uh, that I think, you know, what's perplexing observers of the chicken industry right now is the fact that it presents such a value as compared to some of the other proteins that the consumer might be, be uh, oscillating between, whether that's a food service, uh, retail, uh, fast food, what have you. And, uh, but that supply, I mean, it's critical. And then you take major city, <laughs> the major city out of the equation for a day or two where, you know, uh, uh, citizens are asked to stay indoors. That does absolutely nothing uh, for, of course, that segment. And then you throw in a couple related cities, the entire uh, East Coast for that matter. And you really have a situation compounded uh, by record supply, as you said, Dylan. So very informative, very enlightening. And uh, boy, no two years are the same, are they guys? So uh, Karen, Ryan, and Dylan, thank you for joining us today. Always appreciate your insight. And thank you to our viewers for also taking some time out of your day. Today is Tuesday, June the 13th. This has been Ernie Barry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Have a great day.